हरि ओ हरि ओ हरि ओ हेलो माय फ्रेंड्स वी जस्ट हैड टू इंप्रेसिव डाउन पूर्स सो लेट्स सी हाउ इट कंटिन्यूज राइट नाउ इट्स नॉट रेनिंग एंड इवन इफ इट्स रेनिंग एज लॉन्ग एज इट्स नॉट स्टॉर्मिंग वी शुड बी सेफ people live their life day to day growing up learning what to do and then obediently do what they are told to do how to live what to do how to be how not to be and most of the people are satisfied with that and go on their whole life long but then some people wonder what is the point in all this so is there any sense going through all this and start to look whether they can find sense somewhere sooner or later stumble upon spirituality <laughs> and there we are told the whole thing makes sense we can make much more out of our life and just growing up earning money having family accumulating possessions growing old dying <laughs> <clears throat> but then along with the spirituality come all kinds of concepts and some concepts are very useful then we hear about enlightenment we hear about self realization i remember when i was 14 and stumbled upon yoga and then get in connection with a, with a very good yoga school in Zurich in Switzerland suddenly it seemed like a ray of light that came yes maybe there is a point in the whole story and then that concept of striving for self realization for enlightenment became like a guiding star i had to go through all kinds of experiences until 11 years later i came to india and still was directed by that id enlightenment self realization on the way i learned all kinds of concepts what it is and then categories of enlightenment self realization god realization brahma realization <laughs> eventually on my way it was time to drop all the concepts not more have imaginations when things started to happen it happened so totally different from whatever i expected and it became clear 
all these concepts they had their purpose they were inspiring they gave a good direction but as long as we think because of having learned those concepts we have understood what's going on we have understood what is about to happen what should happen then we are caught in the cage of that concept on an intellectual level it's time then that we let them go and we just bring the attention back to that awareness that immediate experience of i'm here i'm conscious i'm alive and learn to focus on that or focus on devotion to god because when we bring the attention back to that sense of presence through self inquiry or through learning to feel and to balance out and to harmonize the life energy the prana that sense of presence that we are experiencing that there is that same sense of presence that we can experience when we are worshiping god and start more and more to feel that divine presence and then it's good to let go of all ideas of all concept to just stay with that and learn have a good look at ourselves learn what is preventing us learn from our own experience to see how we are always creating obstacles learn not to do that anymore and then just stay with that and be open and let the experience unfold and hanging on at that point to the concepts to all the descriptions to whatever we have learned is more of an obstacle than a help now i'm talking about this because mariam asked me what this is all about because a friend told her there is self realization and there is god realization and ramana maharshi he was only self realized he was not god realized so mariam don't get any confusion because of that because that friend of yours she is definitely talking from her learned knowledge the school she connects with has that hierarchy and so she has ideas what means what and then uh, starts to have that those drawers and from the words from the indications puts people in drawers and there they are it doesn't make any sense self realization god realization it's the same essence becoming aware that there is something that is prior to time and space that has no limits that defies all understanding and descriptions so if we hear such things we need not take them serious if for that person this is helpful to hold on to those concepts fine then maybe that is inspiring them to do their practice faithfully they have learned in their school eventually it would be better for them also to drop it but it's not necessary that we go into discussions i mean <laughs> ramana maharshi was so way beyond all understanding to try to put him like this in a drawer and bag him like this this is complete nonsense we need not get confused because of that the experience 
how these develops will be different from one to another in its own unique, beautiful way. Draw inspiration from the great lives of Mahatmas like Ramana Maharshi, like Sri Ramakrishna, like other great Mahatmas and yogis we hear about, we read about, we are being told about, draw inspiration, but don't think that we can understand exactly where they are, what they are. If through their teaching, it helps us to open the heart and connect, then that teaching has done its purpose and we need not start to make in our head hierarchies of them because anyone who is pure in heart and connects with that unfathomable reality and if they're in that connection they talk something very beautiful flows through them and we can draw inspiration and direction from them, but not take the words too literally, usual, usually, but just connect with the space where the words are coming from. And then we can forget about all these kind of concepts like self-realization and God-realization. There is a difference between the Mahatmas self-realized or God-realized or Brahma-realized. <laughs> <clears throat> Just come back home to the source, to the essence, to the sense of being here now, conscious, consciously alive, and stay with that as good as we can and let the experience of it unfold in its own unique beauty without trying to shape our experience according to things that we have learned thinking this has to happen that has to happen if i'm experiencing this i'm at that state at that level if i'm experiencing that i'm at another level in the beginning usually this is inspiring but we can't let that go. We don't need to hang on to that. It's here, it's now, what we are looking for. God reality is not somehow somewhere up there in the sky beyond the clouds beyond the, the, the galaxy it's here now in everything we experience with every breath that divine essence is active here now Let's just bring the attention back to that. Every smell we smell, every taste we taste, every sound we hear, every thought we think, every emotion we feel is there because this divine essence is here now. We don't have to go look out somewhere for that. It's always in that timelessness of the present. That's where you have to put the attention and then just be open. We can make an effort to bring the attention back home. As long as it's going out, getting lost in the story, in the past, in the future, in our daydreams, in our castles that we are building <laughs> in our mind then that effort is necessary to catch the attention see what's happening and bring it back home and then just be in touch with that consciously and open 
that's all we can do. That's much we somehow have to do. And then we can forget about all concepts of it. Just let that experience unfold in its own unique beauty. All right. I dropped the subject. There was a little other question connected to it, but it's not immediately present now. So I stopped talking and I'm asking you, my friends, is there anybody who would like to come in? You are welcome to do so. Hello, Werner. Hello, Nelly. I have some questions. Yes, you are welcome. Uh, uh, yes, I, I, I'd like to clear for myself uh, what you said before uh, last time when I asked you. We talked about uh, beings that um, project some um, pers um, personalities. Mm -hmm. And I, in connection, I asked you about my friend who was in coma and uh, uh, how it was possible that this being could uh, project one more personality. Mm -hmm. Yes, you remember? Yes. Yeah, I, I thought about it and I see that I uh, don't understand it clear how it is possible and or maybe... Um, as I see, uh, so this the being can uh, project um, not one but many uh, can make many projections and can create uh, many personalities. So, as uh, if I am as Nelly live here uh, as the projection of uh, one of the being, and um, there can be. Uh, some more persons uh, like me from the same being and uh, how, how can we connect with each other <laughs> can I, I just yes I don't understand this can we uh, yes connect or feel that we are from the same being how does it look like I, I mm -hmm. have no understanding yes because of what I said, now don't get more caught up in the whole question. I'm just having said that mainly also in the context that somebody said your your friend is now already withdrawn and already is about to reincarnate again. It's already a, in a fetus. <clears throat> don't take all these theories for God's own truth. They are indications. The reincarnation theory is coming closer to what is really happening. Then like uh, you leave one time and then after that uh, you either go to hell or to heaven. <laughs> so, so reincarnation is certainly more in tune what's going on. But then we can also drop the fixation on that concept that you, what you really are, is not incarnated. And from that timeless state can project into a time-space continuum and that forms that personality. It is possible. Maybe there is just one projection, but it's possible that there are more con uh, projections, but they need not be at the same point of time. So from a timeless state, what is for us so taken for granted, the time, the flow of time, the past and the future may look very different. And from there, you can point, uh, project into different times simultaneously <laughs> and then sometimes people somewhere connect and their conclusion is oh I'm remembering a past life <laughs> <clears throat> uh, 
but uh, it's also possible that there is another projection in at the same time. Now, you need not worry about that and wonder, uh, should I somehow try to connect if there is somebody like this, be busy with Nelly and through Nelly connect with your own self. If somehow it should happen in your life story that suddenly you meet somebody and you become aware actually you are basically one. Because both are projections from the same being, then that may be something totally extraordinary. But there is nothing that you should do now, try to search out whether there is somebody like this. <laughs> <laughs> don't waste your time with this so i didn't say these things in order to make you more confused and get more uh, ideas what you should do about be busy truly with what you are experiencing here now and connect with that essence that is what we are here for that is our job mm. Uh, thank you. <laughs> yes, I just wonder, wonder about it. It's curious. <laughs> of course, for the yeah. mind, this kind of stuff is always fascinating, but then uh, we don't have to get lost. And I'm not claiming what I'm saying is now the ultimate truth. I would say it's again closer to what is the mystery of what is happening than the traditional reincarnation theory. But still, it's a way of talking about something that is not really logical and understandable. So we don't have to dwell too much on that. You know you are here now. Come back to that. Be with that. Come back to your source. Connect with your being. And all the knowledge is there in your being. Okay. <laughs> I have another question. I don't know if this connected maybe with this one but I I, I heard a lot uh, about a sense I mean not uh, a sense that you talk about like a divine a sense but about some negative a sense that can come into someone's body like uh, I was I was talked uh, when our friend was in coma and one person said that uh, her soul is out of her body, but it is possible then another uh, a sense, some negative sense can come into her and she can uh, get in her conscious state and it would be not uh, our friend as we know her, but it will be another person and behave yourself another way not good way and something like this that some sense come uh, come can come can come in bodies and uh, behave another way something like this maybe you can say something about it well words are being used differently when i talk of the essence then i mean that which makes the life possible that which makes the experience possible. And there are not good essences and bad essences. There is that essence which is ultimately beyond good and bad, beyond anything we can understand. So it's not that another essence, as I'm using the word, could enter your body. It is possible that some energy may enter, that even some being may try to enter even when people are conscious and possess them. That is possible. It's also possible that if somebody is absent, like in a coma, that uh, some being is trying to, uh, to settle down, to settle in, and then come alive again. All these things are possible, yes. But it's not the essence, it's not a good essence and a bad essence. When I use the word essence, then I mean that which at this present moment makes you capable of asking this question, of listening to me, of thinking about it, understanding 
of opening your heart, of being consciously alive. And there is no good and bad essence. There is just that one essence that is absolutely not understandable. And then in manifestation, when there is a body, there is possible that the negative energies, negative beings, evil beings try sometimes to take over. And they are at least any all the time trying to influence people because they get a kick out of it. <laughs> but it's also possible that sometimes they may enter the body and suppress the personality that is there and do uh, things that actually that person would not do. Mm-hmm. If you are strong, if you are connected with yourself, such a thing will not happen. It's more like uh, not characters that are very insecure, not sure of themselves, they are more prone that such a thing can happen. Mm -hmm. I see it. Don't be afraid. Somebody is going to (laughs) slip in your body and kick you out. (laughs) <laughs> you're strong yeah, I, I, and hold on to your own strength and believe in your strength that then nobody can do such mischief <laughs> <laughs> I, I just didn't think about it like some um, outside thing I thought that everything is inside me if I go on to the negative thoughts uh, I, uh, I get uh, that state of negative state if i go to the positive uh, um, things i i am in another state in positive but uh, now i heard that there is something looks like that this is something that comes out or from um, from outside that it's not inside me yes because i have positive thoughts and negative thoughts i know this but now I, I, uh, I understand that this is something that comes from outside. Like I, I don't know. I, as I understand this, something. I don't know. Something uh, um, external. Yeah. yeah. Well, everything is connected, so it's not really internal or external but you are right we the tendency the potential is in everybody to slip into negativity and if we do so then invariably we are attracting negative energies that also influences so then it's first we are opening up to that by ourselves putting ourselves in a destructive state of mind. And then uh, it's attracting dark forces that get the kick out of it and they are interested to push you more into that. But still, Mm. it's not like that they have the capacity so easily to come in and possess you, but they can influence. And the same thing is happening if you opening up to beauty, to love, to harmony, to expansion of consciousness, then you are attracting very positive energies that also get a kick out of that and that support you very much and help you and you help them. It's a mutual beneficial connection. (laughs) This kind of interaction is there all the time without our knowing that uh, whatever state of mind we are, we are attracting through in manifestation energies that vibrate along with that state of mind. And so it's good, especially in this intensive time, to watch our mind and not sleep into negativity because it can become very destructive. It's immediately very strongly supported, but so is the positive. Yes, I see. Okay, thank you, Werner. You are welcome. Hario. 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 
would anybody else like to come and say something? You are muted. I can I can see you, Leela, but I can't hear you. Now it seems it's okay. I saw that uh, Revi wanted to come in before, but probably he gave up when together with Nelly. So, yeah. Um, it was interesting to listen to what you were talking about before when you started and it was a good reminder. I have been getting a bit confused. <laughs> it has been getting a bit difficult, more and more difficult. Um, and then it's the things one shouldn't be doing, like uh, sitting and watching uh, the whole uh, drama of uh, the kidnapped, some of them coming back from Gaza last night. I couldn't uh, let go, <laughs> couldn't let go. Yes. Specifically, I wanted to see if the girls were coming, the daughter and the grandchildren of my friend. And yeah, so, uh, and they came, thanks God. Of course, we didn't see them, but uh, they gave their names. Anyway, I know that I know very well that this is not something that supports um, connecting or um, um, like staying stable or anything that that can support my well-being. It's it's the opposite. One thing that was good was that it really made me cry, which um, what. What is good for me because I don't often cry like I cried last night. It was a good uh, way of releasing releasing the um, emotions and uh, tension. So, and then you you talk often about the magic show, <laughs> and. Um, It's confusing, it's confusing really, and very difficult to stay, as I said before, stable and two feet on the ground, and uh, doesn't matter if it's a magic show, it's a bad one. And if it's real, I don't know. It's very difficult to connect if I try to imagine what these people have been through, it's impossible. But sometimes I just want to be with them. Yeah. So uh, I just um, just think about about them. Yes, you it's said not stories. Yeah, you said before that the. Uh... Of course, if you think about these things, that uh, is not helping to be connected, it will pull you away from it. So yeah. you cannot let it go. It need not pull you away from it. It's not mm. that you should now try to put blinders and just not to try not to be aware of what is going on on this level. It's going on. It's a magic show. It's not as real as it appears, but the experience is real. It's temporary, but it's real as an experience. And if people are going through suffering, it's real as an experience. They suffer. <clears throat> but it is possible that you are aware of that. And even if you connecting with them, especially people you already know and you have a connection, you connect with them, but at the same time, you are aware there is that aspect that is not affected by it. 
that in spite of connecting, that you don't get lost on the emotional level. And the emotions will come, the sadness will come, the horror will come thinking what may have happened. But it's emotions and you can become aware prior to emotion, there is that aspect that is not affected by it. So the fact that it is not as real as it appears doesn't mean we have to somehow close our hearts and think, no, I should not connect with all that. You can very well connect, but do it consciously and be aware, in spite of all that, this is all temporary. It's there a moment, it's gone, but there is something that is not changing. It's there prior to that, it's during the experience is good and bad, and it's after those experiences. It's prior to the life, during the life, and after the life. It's something that is there, like a rock. And mm -hmm. if you connect with that, then even when you connect, you can very well connect with your friends, children, and grandchildren. And if you connect with them, there may be not nice energies and feelings coming towards you because of what they experienced, because of maybe what they are still experiencing wherever they are now. But if you can do so and at the same time still be aware, there is that thing that makes it possible. And for, get rooted in that, then actually your connecting with them brings something very precious, beautiful to them. Mm -hmm. So let's not get lost in the story. We don't have to put blinders and not to want to know. I don't want to know. That's not the solution. You are in the midst of it. You cannot possibly just ignore it. But then consciously connect and consciously be aware, but there is something there which is simply prior to all that. And if you are touching that consciously and connect with your friends or with strangers, and think of what terrible stories they are going through, then actually you are really helping them. Something very beautiful flows from that unmovable space through you to them and makes it a little bit easier for them. Yeah. If we get all depressed thinking of them, if we get completely desperate, then actually we are making it more difficult for them because then we are sending again those negative energy that is not helping them, but rather having the tendency to pull them even more down. So there is a difference between um, emotions such uh, pain and sadness and and then depression and uh, despair uh, because uh, I feel that uh, if uh, it's okay, it's very natural, of course, to be sad or to cry and uh, and to feel the pain really in my body. Then, then slipping into into despair and uh, and depression. And, and another thing that I could feel this week was that the, the inner speech was becoming a bit like uh, the little girl yeah. <laughs> that forgot everything and like poor me and only if only so and so. And uh, all all that uh, inner speech, so I could see it. I could see it, but it was a bit like uh, taking over. Um, yeah, you understand. So, and yeah, I, I can remind myself. Um, but but I also say to myself, oh, okay, this is a very difficult time. Very difficult time. So. So yeah, you, you can do it, but uh, sometimes you fall off the road and <laughs> come back. It's, it's uh, challenging. I, can, I say that. 
the coming back is the important thing. Of course, it will yeah. happen. It will happen that sometimes you forget and uh, you get pulled into despair. But actually, what you said is very significant. Then that poor little me comes in, and that's the difference when sadness is there, but you still are connected. Yeah. Then yeah. It's, it's not a negative experience. But when self pity comes in, then it pulls you the, in the dark, destructive spiral and ends in depression and despair. Yeah. And confusion. Depression and despair is always connected with still self pity. Poor me. Why is this happening? Poor me. I have to experience that. Poor me. I have to see that. Uh, poor me. Then, even if initially, we are connecting with somebody who is suffering, but when it's coming into this bed, actually, we are already not more really thinking about them, but the poor me who has to somehow experience that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Connecting, yeah. It's, I can see that. Yeah, I can visual the, yeah, yeah. what you just said. Yeah. Right. Okay. It is a very intensive time. So many people are suffering. It's no point in putting blinders. Say, oh, I don't, I don't want to know. It's not there. It's there. On a relative level, it's a fact, and people are suffering. It's not that we have to become hard and callous and cynical and just somehow push that away. It's there. You can feel their pain, but don't let that self-pity slip in and become destructive. But in other, in contrary, connect with your own beautiful self when you are doing that. And then it's an experience for you, that makes you stronger and more expansive. And actually, it's something very precious that you are doing to your surroundings and that you are doing especially to those people you are connecting with. Yeah, I know that and I can feel it. Today, something funny happened, very sweet. I'm not going to tell it, but very sweet in the morning when I took a short walk. Mm. And uh, um, I felt... Mm, you're still okay, I said to myself. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Of course you are okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sometimes out of old habit, out of the intensity of the situation, we may lose a bit of touch. But what matters, if that happens, okay, it happens, so what? No point in reprimanding ourselves and punishing ourselves. Just see, oh, there it happens again, and then you come back. That coming back is what counts. Right. Come back. Yeah. Okay, then. Wish you well. How are you? Thank you. How are you? How are you? Is there anybody else who would like to come in? Lila mentioned Ravi. Are you still here, Ravi? Did you want to come in? Uh, Ravi is not there. <laughs> okay. Is there anybody else who would like to come? All right, stay. Let's stay for a moment longer with the subject. It is very good to understand this. There is absolutely nothing wrong 
is being said. There's absolutely nothing wrong if we see violence, if we see cruelty. There are these feelings of repulsion. It's not that we have to somehow try to like that stuff. But if we are not conscious, if we are not alert, then it slips so easily in that we start actually after a moment to feel sorry for ourselves. We see a situation that is terrible. We feel terrible about it, but then there comes that sleeps, unnoticed that self-pity in it. And then people are not more aware that they're actually not more concerned about what brought this feeling about, but are actually just feeling for, sorry for themselves that they are forced to witness such a terrible scene. And then self-pity is eating up our energy. It drains us totally and it pulls the attention down and lowers the vibration, lowers, contracts the consciousness, which is against nature. Conscious, consciousness naturally wants to be expensive. And everything that is contracting consciousness is making us suffer. And so if that self-pity slips in, when we see ter terrible things, then we can slip into despair, into depression, and become just destructive destructive for our own life and radiating a destructive energy. It's very important to be alert. As I said to Leela just now, don't try to make blind, put up blinders. And say, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. It's too bad. I have nothing to do with it. We have to do with it. We are all connected. And as humans, we are specially connected with all other humans. We are also connected to all the animals and the trees and the, all the plants. We are even connected to all the stones. We are even connected to whatever is created artificially. But as a human being, naturally, energetically, we are mainly strongly connected with all the other human beings. So even if we try to push it away and don't want to know, we are still connected. We can very well be aware of what's going on, see that there is a lot of stuff that is absolutely not nice that is going on, but then consciously learn to deal with that experience in such a way that it's not contracting consciousness, but that that very experience can help us to make consciousness expansive. And to, in order that it becomes like this, is to just exactly do what I said before to Leela. When we are in that situation, that we see cruelty, that we see terrible things that are happening, that we may start to imagine how it is or what may have happened, that at the same time we are connecting with that which is prior to the emotions, that which is not affected by it. Not because one creates a wall, but because it is not part of manifestation. It's that which makes manifestation possible. Come back to that, connect with that. And if you are rooted in that and then see suffering, then actually this makes you stronger. Making you stronger means your consciousness is expanding. 
that's what we are here for. And as we are connected with everybody else, then we contribute something very precious to the general human experience. And especially if we think about particular people at that moment, with those thoughts, we connecting energetically even stronger with those individuals. And if we can connect with them in such a way that we are aware no matter what is happening, something is not affected. That divine essence is not affected. And if we connect with that as good as we can, even if it's not a full out experience, as good as we can, even attempting to connect consciously with that changes the whole experience and something beautiful can flow out to us, to the other people of whom we are thinking. This is really compassion. I'm not feeling sorry for somebody, not feeling pity that actually uh, after uh, always connects with self-pity. I remember having read in Nisargadatta once uh, somebody asked him, him but, uh, what are you doing? for the suffering in the world. You, I mean, what's the good of all your teaching and what are you doing for the suffering, for the people who are suffering? And Nisargadatta told that person, I connect with them, I'm becoming one with them. And the other person asked you about, uh, and that's it. And he said, yes, that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> connecting and being aware the suffering is temporary and nobody suffers in vain they are also growing accumulating something precious that helps them eventually to become more expensive in their experience being aware of that is compassion, is helping them. If we can externally contribute something to make the suffering easier, the external situation better for somebody, fine, wonderful, let's do so. But we don't have to run after that, this inner connection, this inner being aware that we are always connected. If we're hurting people, we are hurting ourselves. If we do something good to people, we are doing something good to ourselves. And even if we simply connect with somebody who suffers, but are aware, there is that essence. That incredible essence. No matter what is happening, full of that joyousness of existence, it is absolutely not affected. Then, actually, connecting like this, we really, really help them, whether they are aware of it or not. This is the real compassion. <clears throat> I'm asking you again, my friends. Is by now somebody there? Who would like to say something? You're welcome to come in. So I would like to ask something very specific about what you just said now. Um, in regards again to emotions, um, in a way I feel it's easy to slide into anger and uh, opinions and explanations about the situation or any situation. For, uh, rather than um, connecting maybe and letting be the, the 
deepest maybe emotions such as I mentioned before, pain and sadness, and you mentioned now compassion. Um, and then also um, to become speechless, really, because situation is so complex that somehow the, the words lose their meaning and and there is nothing to say. I mean, yeah. And and the anger is then can can go can be directed to a, a person that is not connected to the story anyhow. And uh, then I've I've felt it this week that things like aggravate me somehow. Yes. So um yeah, uh, yeah. So I guess it's the same again as you said, but it's another aspect. Right. And we can get overwhelmed by emotions and then we express them. And then whoever is around will get will get a load of it. Yeah, it doesn't happen to me like really like that, of course, because I'm so aware, but still I can feel it inside. Yes. how it's coming up and then I have to make it to exercise like that and then okay remember yeah. Yeah. then it's very good the emotion will come and the, and the urge to express something negative may also come but if you can see it and then you deal with it like that by seeing ah, and then you connect and you you don't try to suppress the emotion, you just see it's there, you see what it is doing, but at the same time, watching it like that, already you're connecting with that which is not affected. And then those emotions, they come, they are there a moment, they go, and they don't create problems. It's just if we don't recognize them and getting pulled along with them, then our actions also have the tendency to become destructive. Yeah, complications and stuff, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Maybe that is. <laughs> Anybody else? Life is a magic show. When we are the, in the midst of a situation, often it seems to be so totally overwhelming. But we already know from our own life, even in the personal story, Ten years ago, there may have been a situation we have may have been blown away, completely undone, <laughs> and then done all kinds of not very harmonious things because of that. We thought it's totally unbearable what's going on. But then a year passes, it looks different. Now it's maybe 10 years ago. And then it looks already totally manageable. If we insist of being attached to our personal role in it, then we may carry along strong emotions for the rest of our life. But most of the time, those strong emotions, they dissipate. And we see the situation again, we remember the emotions. And suddenly, it's not so overwhelming. Okay, it was not a nice situation. The way I behaved may have been totally stupid, not nice. And now, looking from afar, not being identified like when we are in the midst of it, we may even smile about it. 
think uh, that was something, but not take it so serious. And we can learn to have more of that attitude in the present time. It's just because I'm identifying so totally with that me personality that everything seems to be so huge, tremendous, and important. Reminding ourselves, this person is just the role that I'm playing. I'm timeless, spaceless, and prior to all that. If we bring the attention back, at least turn it in that direction, then all that which is so huge and impossible and unbearable and important loses its sting. Even now, not simply when we deal with it as a memory that has happened years ago. We can have that more detached attitude even now. We can develop the capacity to have that detached attitude now. Still, unpleasant situation will be unpleasant situation, but we can deal with them <clears throat> much easier, much more constructive, because we don't identify with the role that we are playing, but being aware there is something not affected by it prior to that. Let's come home to that. So you guys here want me to talk on and on? <laughs> Hello, Hello, Andreas. You are <laughs> rescuing me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. um, I just listened to your story on YouTube, the interview you did with the, the woman and the guy yeah. um, a couple of days ago. And... Uh, I mean, I knew it already, but you 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 said like you you sit like seven years in the cave without coming out yes. after you return to to Amma's place. What happened in those seven years? <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what happened in those seven years was that that which was was already there before I entered that cave the second time that got more solid and got stronger and more expensive. <laughs> Is it like <laughs> different worlds expanding? It's more like I'm using often that word expanding. Why expanding is, is somewhat symbolic for being stronger. And being stronger is also somewhat symbolic <laughs> for <laughs> being more consciously aware and rooted from moment to moment of that essence that is not affected. And the more you are aware and the more you are rooted, the more of that joyous aspect of existence simply flows into your experience, into manifestation, and your life becomes more and more joyous. It's not that the, there is an ongoing ecstasy, but that joyousness, the intensity of it increases all the time. And the intensity of that experience that is today may have sent you some time ago into a raving ecstasy. But as you are maturing in that, then it remains a peaceful joyousness just with a totally different intensity. And does it stick with you all the time? The intensity of the experience will invariably change. 
but it doesn't go away. So is it like a de devised attention that one part is always on the source and the other one is dealing with the daily business? Even when there is a intense external situation with emotions and the conflicts and difficulties deep down that awareness is there. <laughs> it doesn't really touch. It's just momentary story that is manifesting like this. It doesn't really touch. So, so you're looking at yourself with, with a lot of distance, like this, like to this Werner experience. You can say so. Yes. Right. And, and the main main thing is just somewhere else with the. It's not somewhere else. It's simply not a subject of that story. It's that essence. So how can it be somewhere else? It's that which makes the story possible. <laughs> it's here. It's now. Timeless, spaceless. <laughs> but it's not uh, the main aspect. The main trust of the experience is not caught up in the story and getting overwhelmed with the emotions that are uh, coming like waves. They come, they go, they change all the time. It's not overwhelmed by the continuous change of the facts of manifestation. Nothing stays, nothing remains. It's always changing, always changing, but there is that solid aspect there. As I said to Leela, it's there like a rock. <laughs> and that rock <laughs> is the main thing. <laughs> but there are still emotions. Emotions are there. As long as a human body will appear and the human story goes on, the whole range of emotions are there as a potential. But they don't, if you don't identify with them, if you don't get totally overwhelmed by the emotions, then they are like ripples. They come, they go, they make actually that human experience more juicy. <laughs> But uh, if we are identifying with the emotion, with the story, with the personality, then we are making out of what would be a natural, just a gentle rippling experience. We are turning them into bigger and bigger waves. They become tsunamis that become destructive. <laughs> and that is not happening. <laughs> In, in the Buddhist tradition, they talk about like um, fetters, like, like about fetters. Fet fetters. They call it fetters. They, it's like pollutions of the the true self. Uh -huh. And over time, like they have like four different stages of enlightenment, and you lose more and more of these fetters. You become more and more detached. You can say and. Um, yeah, then I think one of the last ones is maybe like uh, sexual desire, and the the first with the first step there there goes the uh, identification with the self, and the other two I forgot. <laughs> yeah. uh, do, do you experience something similar that like certain things just drop away and are not there anymore? They are not absent, but they are transformed. That they are, instead of being trouble, uh, something that uh, in itself can intensify the experience. So, I don't know. Something in itself can intensify the experience? <laughs> right. That the, like you said, the sexual desire. As long as the human body is there, that possibility is that that sexual ID comes up. Hmm. But as long as we are identified with the ID, identified with the personality, identified with all the levels of the personality, then usually that desire creates a lot of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> And the, the energy is right. It's like it's pulling down the energy. 
But then that energy can transform. That sexuality is not more a disturbance, but that same energy that used to create all kinds of troubles and tensions may flow in the opposite directions. That even in the body, instead of flowing downwards and creating all kinds of restlessness, starts in the lower part of the body and flows up on top of the head and distributes in the whole body and is connected with peace and joy and expansion and doesn't create restlessness and problems. Hmm. Is, is that the central idea of Tantra? Yes, you can say so, right. Did you transform the, this, this energy? Right. And so it is everything that can create personal problems. We don't have to somehow cut it off. We just have to learn to deal with all those energy in some way, in a certain way, that instead of they leading to into traps where you are feeling caught and where you are feeling getting smaller, <laughs> getting contracted, that that energy, because everything is built on energy, that that energy can be de de redirected uh, and reused in such a way that then same thing that used to create problems can be used to be more expensive. Yeah, when you talked before about like all the troubles in the world, sometimes when I watch like the news, I have the feeling it's too much. I for, Sometimes I can feel compassion But sometimes I just feel, oh, I'm too tired for this now, <laughs> and I, or I, I just, I just, just don't have the energy to to bring up compassion for like three different areas of the world where there's all everything is a complete mess. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I just feel overwhelmed with it. How to deal with that? Right. When I said to Leora, to Lila, <laughs> that. Uh, you don't have to put blinders. That doesn't mean you have to force yourself now <laughs> to be all the time uh, after information, information. And if at that moment you feel uh, it's not what you need to do to, to plunge into that, then you have the, have the right to withdraw your attention from that. It's not that you have to force yourself all the time, but it will come to you. Uh, the information, the emotions, the energies will reach you and there, as it reaches, you can learn to deal with it in such a way that you are not getting overwhelmed by it. So you don't have to force yourself, no, no, uh, I have to now uh, inform myself and stick it out and look the, at the news. <laughs> But it will still reach you. And there we don't have to try to make a, a block and uh, just create a little little bubble because then the consciousness, the experience remains also a little bubble. How to deal with it? It's not that you have to now try to si sit down and think of different areas in the world where there is so much trouble, where there is so much suffering and then... Uh, feel compassion before them it's just when it's reaching you and it's about to shake you up then in like instead of being undone by it then turn the attention back to the not run away not say no 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 i can't deal with it but okay it's there but turn the attention back to that rock <laughs> that which is not affected by it. And then you deal with it already. Then it's not overwhelming. It's at the same time, you're aware. There are so many people you are aware, they are suffering. And then you don't have to artificially try to develop emotions for them and do all kinds of things. If emotions spontaneously come and flow to them, fine. but. The very fact that you are aware this is happening, but you connect with that aspect that is not affected by it. And still keep that awareness of the suffering 
you have already done your job. <laughs> That's how you deal with it. Uh, yeah, sometimes I just have, yeah, it's, I just lack the energy. Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, should I put another question or should we check if someone else wants to ask you something? You cannot put another question. Last time we, you talked about like the evil forces, I don't know, or the dark energy, I don't know how to correct. Um, and yeah, like I was in the United States when, of America when, the, when Trump was elected in the Zen Center and everybody there was very desperate about it. They were all left wing and they said it, it's completely... Yeah, they, they were completely desperate about it, and they were they were very political um, engaged. And yeah. but but I noticed that they were very much putting off a lot. I mean, half forty percent or fifty percent of the people voted for Trump in America, and they are like uh, very. I mean, they, they're very much put put a barrier between themselves and these people. Like, and so up. And I thought this isn't this doesn't feel very good. But on the other side, I, I can understand why. Like I mean, the, just like uh, saying the the climate change is not real and all this stuff, what he does is is really upsetting. And what is the best way to deal with something like that? With the like with with this gap and like even the, like sometimes you meet people in like rural Arizona that seem to be very nice and helpful people. Yeah, and then it, as soon as you talk with them about politics, you get like really shocked. Um, yeah, so what <laughs> what to do? <laughs> right, I'm not going uh, in any way now into who is a good guy and who is a bad guy. No? <laughs> right, and the, and the real bad guys there uh, that pull the strings there are not those that you see in the news <laughs> and that you are electing. <laughs> they are just being manipulated and pulled also. Anyhow, how to deal with all that stuff? People are getting extremely emotional about their attitudes, politically and uh, whatever is connected to politics. <clears throat> you can have your opinions. But at the same time, you can always know, okay, my opinion is an opinion. And I have built it up by getting certain informations. Lots of that informations may not even be true. And so my opinion may not be always true. <laughs> what matters is that you are in harmony with yourself. And if you feel people are uh, having totally different ideas than you, then if you feel an openness, you can exchange those ideas. You have your ideas, they have their ideas. But if you see it's just getting out of hand and people start to fight with each other instead of getting somehow deeper by an exchange, it's just getting smaller again, contracting because people are carried away by their emotions, then after all, at that moment, the opinion the, doesn't even matter anymore, but it's then me, I'm right, that starts to matter. <laughs> and then people come and bang their heads uh, against each other. And that's that kind of discussion is useless. If you feel you have anything to say, and you see it's reaching, then you can do so. But if you see it's anyhow not reaching, then you better keep quiet. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's how I understood you so far. But when I reflect on what you said like last time, then I have the impression that some people are very much um, um, hateful and what they with what they do as politics or political messages is very much enforced by some kind kind of hate to foreigners or to and very e egoistic motives just making money and exploiting nature and stuff like that so so 
like that they are like somehow yeah um yeah connected to the like this evil dark force and so i, I re, re reconsidered my my thinking about it like what what to do with with yeah like these people who yeah yeah I mean, you're not going to do directly something with them. You're not going to beat uh, yourself <laughs> with the <laughs> with the president and the <laughs> parliament <laughs> members <laughs> and the senators. <clears throat> you can you can take in the energy of what is happening, and you can learn even if you feel there is a negative energy flowing into your consciousness, into your being, to transform that, to not get overwhelmed by that, but you hold on to your own self. And that creates harmony. You are even prior to negative and positive, but as soon as there is manifestation invariably, there is many. Uh, there is positive, negative. It it needs the polarity for manifestation to exist. Without the polarity, manifestation whoop, is gone. <laughs> <coughs> so on the external level, the level of opinions, the level of politics. If you are in a position to directly do something about something about the situation by all means do what you feel is right but most of the time most of us we are not in positions that we can directly do something about it what we can do is to see what is happening and not get pulled into negativity if something is happening what seems to be negative but actually all those who who apparently seem to be so nice. <laughs> if you look, look deeper, there is not so much nice stuff going on. There are not really the good guys and the bad guys. It's, it's just one total horror that is simply going on now, no matter from which political side they are coming. Sorry to say that, but this is simply the <clears throat> what is happening. And our job is not to get sucked into the negativity of it. You help best by creating peace and harmony in yourself. If more people do that, then the negative destructive forces, they have less and less chance to manifest themselves, to create troubles in the world. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, right. Right now, I have to to deal with the negative energy by selling my old car. <laughs> like a lot of people. Are... <laughs> right, you do it playfully, and then it's not a problem. <laughs> right. Okay. Shall we leave it at that? <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. See you soon. See you soon. <laughs> Uh huh. Right, this. Hello. Hello. Uh, so, uh, is your name pronounced Ritis or Ritis? Ritis. Ritis. Hello, Ritis. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, spelling in English is the different. So uh, yeah, yeah. Because we use the same letters. Yeah. And listen. So my question is about uh, this, uh, to talk today, this attachment with emotions and mind stuff and uh, bringing at attention back to the source. Yes. So, uh, if I'm sitting still, like meditating, so it's uh, quite easy to put attention on that. Mm. But if I'm going out, I need to do something. So this body functioning, I need to watch around then meet people, the social situations, what they tell, what they think, and emotions come. And then is complete uh, identification with the situation. Is it mental, like thinking, or it's emotional, mm. or something like that. So, and then uh, 
uh, I'm forgetting that all, all about that and uh, all the stuff. And only later you can remember. Mm. So do we need to train uh, to divide attention uh, to that and to daily life? Uh, is it useful to train that? Mm. It is possible, yes. And if in the situation you forget, but after that you remember, and then you also remember the situation and maybe there the emotions still have the tendency to come back and overwhelm you, at least there you can step a step back and watch the emotion instead of being a subject to the emotion. Let's say somebody on the street has insulted you, made you real angry. And then in the situation, you completely forget. And then when you are at home, you remember and you're still getting angry, remembering it. And But then the anger is manageable easier and it's easier to remember, okay, I can deal with it differently. I let the emotion come, but at the same time, I watch what it is doing physically, energetically right now. And then if you do that with the memories, of the situation, then you, it's slowly, slowly, you catching your attention earlier and earlier, and eventually you may be able to do the same thing in the midst of the situation. So the, the goal is to, to um, be capable to divide attention and to keep always on, on that attention, right? Right. That That is the root. That is where your root is is set that where it's really anchored. And then you can still be aware of the continuous changing scenery of this manifestation. But uh, being aware there is that other aspect that is not involved, not as victim of it. But it looks like if uh, uh, the body, uh, body mind is not involved in situation and emotion, it's not. Uh, completely sucked in so then it's not much fun about the situation either it's uh, uh, joyful or it's either it's bad then it looks like boring or something like like that right, right. that's the mind who may imagine things like that but the, yeah. actually it's the opposite the more you are connected with that immovable the more you become aware that there is a natural aspect of joyousness in that and the more you are connected with it the more it flows in every experience that you have you don't have to get the kick from the situation but it's simply there the joyousness of existence it's not that uh, after that you become some kind of a, a amorphous blob lifeless <laughs> yeah and uh, when you say that we put attention on that it's uh, or we put attention on the uh, daily situations like emotions mm -hmm. so it looks like that there are three things like body mind where attention goes there mm -hmm. this that where attention also goes there the rooted to, to become and this third thing, which is directed. Mm. Uh, but how it comes with the conception that it's one and I am that what is one. So which of those three is one or all those three should be together one? <laughs> it's only one who is really real. The others are momentary appearances that are depending on that essence. So the oneness is <clears throat> there that the essence is on all the levels involved. But the, the appearance, the life, the situation, it's continuously changing. It's real as in a moment, momentary experience, but it's continuously changing. It never stays as it is. So it is not in that sense real. But the essence is still there because without that, the manifestation, that appearance would not even be possible. But this, this essence, when I try to put attention on something, 
Yes. So I already make from that a sense something or subject, and uh, uh, that is not that, as I understand. That is not that, but it may help you to connect with that. There's nothing wrong putting your attention either on like uh, the question of inquiry. Who is experiencing that? Who is experiencing that the emotion? Uh, then you put that attention on a particular aspect, but that helps you to open up to that which is prior. Or putting your attention to the body sensations. Uh, in the situation, instead of getting all worked up about the situation, then you watch your emotions and put your attention to the body sensations that is real as an experience. And watching those sensations helps you to connect with that, which makes the experience possible. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Shall we leave it at that? Yes. <laughs> all right. I wish you well. Are you home? <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> All right, my friends. Let's stop the satsang for today. This is a magic show. It's good to remember. And of course, all the aspects of that magic show are connected. <clears throat> with the essence. And if we put the attention on a particular aspect of it, but we are doing it consciously in order to become aware of what makes that experience possible, anything can help you to just come back. Anything may just carry you back home to that source of existence. And, of course, what Ritis just said, often, I also thought like this. If we are doing that, if we're just observing, it becomes like uh, boring. It, it, it's chooseless. Then uh, life is getting shallow, but actually the opposite is happening. The more we are capable of doing so, the more there is a natural joyousness and creativity and beauty flowing into our situations, into our life that can express itself stronger and stronger. So don't be afraid of not identifying. <laughs> it's not that we are losing something. The first moment in the mind, it may look a moment like this, but it's wrong. We're gaining everything. I wish you all well. Are you? Are you? Are you?